international media and Philippine media delegation. We are delighted to have the presence of Secretary Carlos Dominguez of the Department of Finance to talk about the results of the ASEAN meetings. And uh, good morning, sir. Uh, now I will turn over to you. Turn it over. Turn it over to you for your opening or short message. Thank you. I'm very happy to be here. Uh, I always uh, enjoy talking to the media. Um, essentially, when you uh, look at these ASEAN meetings, uh, there are generally two aspects of it. First, the aspects, the aspect of the meetings among the ASEAN leaders. And in those meetings, uh, the shared goals of uh, the ASEAN countries are always uh, discussed and means to achieve those goals are planned out. And what are those shared goals? Number one is reduction of poverty is uh, the first goal. Secondly, uh, how do you uh, achieve uh, poverty reduction? And that is through increased connectivity and increased integration of our economies. And uh, the third goal, of course, is to provide a venue for discussing differences among the ASEAN leaders. Uh, the second aspect of uh, uh, these uh, ASEAN meetings is the meetings with, uh, like this morning, we had the meeting with uh, the ASEAN plus three, uh, which are uh, Korea, uh, uh, Japan, and uh, China. And we also have uh, separate meetings with each of those countries, as well as the United uh, Nations uh, representative. Uh, sorry, the Secretary General. So in this year, the discussions with the world at large, represented by these uh, countries, uh, as well as the United States, which will be this afternoon, uh, I think the main goal is to remove uncertainties uh, that are plaguing the international, uh, the international community and are a drag on the growth rate of uh, the world economy. So I think those are the two aspects of uh, these ASEAN meetings and uh, I'd be happy to take any questions you may have on them. Thank you, Secretary. Uh, uh, reminder, everyone, uh, please uh, limit your question to one and one follow-up due to the tight schedule of the Secretary. Now we will move to the Q&A. First question will come from uh, Joan Villanueva, Philippine News Agency. Any new um, commitments from China? Regarding your regarding the the Philippines infra program, since reduction of poverty is also part of the ASEAN summit topics. Well, uh, with regards to our discussions with China, Philippines discussions with China, uh, they were not taken in specifically here because uh, we just had meetings. Uh, the president had a meeting with uh, Vice Premier uh, Hu Chunhua as well as the uh, e economic uh, ministers in the Philippines met with uh, the vice premier as well. On the, on the items here, uh, I think the biggest uh, item uh, that the ASEAN discussed with China is the proposal to remove uh, one big uncertainty, and that, is the uns and that is the uncertainty in the South China Sea. And uh, the, the, the idea was essentially to push for the completion or, or, the, or the finalization of the code of conduct. And I think that was the big, uh, the big item in the agenda between China and uh, ASEAN. But definitely it was not the only 
item. Uh, the cooperation in trade, uh, the confirmation of uh, uh, open trade and uh, fair trade between China and uh, ASEAN uh, was also uh, high on the agenda. Okay. Thank you, John. Next question, uh, Ajans France Press. Hi, my name is Tana Pon from AFP. I would like to ask why President Duterte and ASEAN other ASEAN leaders uh, do not attend the ASEAN-US uh, summit? Um, I'm not really involved in that, but my guess is that uh, the leaders will attend uh, the meetings when their counterparts are here. Uh, so uh, they attend when uh, their counterparts from the plus three nations are here, but uh, when it's a uh, <clears throat> not a leader, I think, uh, and it comes up on a ministerial level, I think the ministers will uh, take care of that. It's just a matter of <coughs> proper balance. Okay, thank you. Next question. You and Ming Chen of Xinhua News Agency. Okay. Good morning, Secretary. Uh, you just mentioned uh, increasing the connectivity is a major issue. Uh, that the ASEAN leaders talk about during the summit. Uh, we, have mentioned, we have noticed that yesterday China and ASEAN issued a joint statement on synergizing the Belt and Road Initiative and the master plan on the ASEAN Connectivity 2025. So we believe this is an achievement. Uh, and uh, as China is a partner of ASEAN's infrastructure building and connectivity, uh, can you tell us what's the importance of synergizing the BRI and uh, master plan on ASEAN Connectivity 2025, and there's a cooperation between China and ASEAN. Yes, as okay. I mentioned earlier, uh, our goals uh, as an ASEAN uh, group are to uh, reduce uh, poverty. In, fa in fact, uh, the other positive way to put it is to increase prosperity of our peoples as well as engage in sustainable development. You know, we are among the areas in the world that will suffer most from climate change. And uh, definitely uh, enhancing the uh, cooperation and connectivity with our very large neighbor is essential to achieving those goals. And of course, uh, the agreement between China and uh, the ASEAN uh, nations uh, was to continue and, and improve the cooperation in all the fields that will improve people's uh, standards of living and uh, improve uh, the possibility of uh, sustainable development and address risks of uh, climate change. Okay. Thank you, Yuan. Next question, Joanna of Asai Shimbun. Good morning, sir. One of the bigger issues that ASEAN is tackling is about the South China Sea. And currently, there are differing views on how we should tackle it. Um, one side, particularly Vietnam, would like, to, would like to mention specific incidents and have it included in the joint leader's statement. Of course, the other side would rather have a more general statement. How about the Philippines? What does, what's the Philippine position on this? Is it more beneficial for everyone to mention specific incidents or we just, you know, be more general? I think the, uh, the goal is to remove uncertainties in uh, the South China Sea. And really to improve, uh, to remove the uncertainties, it is very important to have the code of uh, conduct agreed upon by all parties. Uh, we have to realize that uh, the South China Sea is a very important sea lane, not only for Southeast Asia, Japan, Korea, but even more important for China. Uh, a lot of their, maybe 80% of their trade passes through there. So uh, the removal of uncertainty is uh, definitely the major goal. Now, how that, it is, how that is to be achieved, uh, whether you know, we will go into great detail mentioning 
specific incidents or not is really subject to discussion among all the parties. I think uh, uh, just uh, of the CAF, I think it's very important that recognition of past uh, incidences uh, have to be referred to. I don't know if they have to be referred to in the body of the agreement or maybe an annex, but definitely examples of uh, how uncertainty has been increased have to be taken into consideration. Thank you, Joanna. Okay, um, next question, uh, Cliff Vinson of Nikkei, then Russia Today, then Kyodo and Manila Bulletin. Hi, sir. Good morning, sir. Morning. Cliff Benson from uh, Nikkei. Sir, medyo do, a bit domestic uh, ish, uh, domestic uh, topic. Sir, any fresh indications with regard to the Q3 growth? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's supposed to come out in, yes, uh, on Thursday yet. And uh, I'm sworn to secrecy. So uh, I cannot reveal. In fact, today they're going to announce, is it today or tomorrow? Mm -hmm. They're going to announce the uh, inflation rate and then on Thursday, the Q, the, uh, they, they want to make sure uh, that their comp computations and their numbers are very accurate. So, but uh, we're all hoping for the best. Yeah, a few, a few an some analysts have uh, predicted uh, recovery, meaning to say uh, better than the first two quarters. Uh, no, definitely, share? definitely that's going to happen because our spending did ramp up in the, uh, uh, in the last... Uh, the third quarter. We haven't quite caught up yet. I think we're about still 5% short, but uh, we're getting there. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Cliff. Russia Today. Sir, uh, yes. what would be the latest uh, take on the RCEP? Okay, we're hours before the summit now, but what's <laughs> the latest news from that area? I think they made a lot of progress uh, uh, in, this, in this meeting. Uh, I'm not directly involved in the negotiations, but uh, we were consulted and informed, updated by uh, our trade minister, and uh, it looks like uh, there's a general agreement among the majority of the members uh, that RCEP indeed uh, is a good project and uh, that it's time to end the seven-year discussion. Okay. Next question, Kyodo News. Actually, my question are uh, same as uh, his uh, about ASEM, but may ask uh, in detail of that does every country agree to conclude the ASEM, including India, and whether they agree to uh, decrease tariff uh, trade in goods on tariff uh, at the same rate, or is different? Uh, as I mentioned, uh, that's really the field of my colleague, uh, and that looks like, as I said, uh, the vast majority of the members have already come to the conclusion that uh, RCEP is uh, a good project and uh, the sooner it's uh, ratified by all members, uh, the better. Okay, next question, Manila Bulletin. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Sir, has the absence of U.S. President Trump affected at all the reliability of the U.S. as an ASEAN partner? <laughs> the absence of uh, President Trump uh, basically is he's missed. Uh, I don't think uh, it affects the view of the ASEAN about the reliability of the U.S., for reliability, we had better look into their actions rather than into their presence. Okay. But, but you think uh, President Trump should put more importance to the ASEAN and attend future regional summits? That would be nice, but I suppose he has uh, other issues that he has to address, and most of them are domestic at the moment. I think he has a slight problem with the, the legislature. Uh, there, so let's uh, let's uh, allow him to make his choice. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Jen. Next question, Bloomberg.
Thank you, sir. Our question is, um, so, one second. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, one second is up. <laughs> um, sorry. Um, so, um, Philippines set spending rose uh, 39 year on year, which is the fastest pace in more than a year. Given that improvement, are you excited a rebound in the third quarter GDP growth? And what is your estimate for the third quarter? Thank you. <laughs> well, as I said, uh, uh, may I quote my, uh, my countryman from <laughs> uh, another news agency? He said uh, uh, the the predictions are that the uh, that the growth in the third quarter will exceed those of uh, either of the first or the second quarter, and uh, I believe that's uh, that's most likely because uh, our, the figures that we have announced uh, on spending are uh, actually show that we are have already ramped up our spending and uh, have. Uh, basically almost caught up with our plan. You know, people are, are wondering why uh, government spending, which is only 20% of the GDP, is so important. It is because it, is, uh, it, it has a, uh, a it, it, it stimulates the economy, uh, it creates jobs, uh, it provides infrastructure and connectivity for people, and that's why our Spending program is very, very critical. Okay, next question. Uh, Akiko of Asahi. Then ABS CBN, Vivian. Uh, good morning, sir. Um, if I may ask, how is the health condition of President Duterte since you are the close friend of uh, President? I'm worried about his health and this morning's absence is not due to his health problem, if I may confirm. Thank you. <laughs> no, he's fine. Uh, uh, he's, he's fine. Uh, he's, he's in good health. He's in good spirits. And I think uh, the slight delay this morning had to do with uh, a call of nature. <laughs> Thank you, Akiko. Next Sa question. Same as me, incidentally. I was, I was even later than him. <laughs> Thank you, Akiko. Next question, Vivian of ABS-CBN, then Mrs. Mirror. Hi, sir. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I just wish to ask your, for your fearless forecast for the GDP uh, in the country. For the fourth quarter, do you think we will hit the target for full year 2019? Fourth quarter? Fourth quarter, and then if we will hit the t full year target. Well, the full, uh, we will certainly, uh, we are certainly in a very good position to uh, hit the uh, lower end of the target of... Uh, six to seven percent uh, this year. Lower end, unfortunately, because we had a five-month delay in the approval of the budget, uh, and also we had uh, the problem of uh, the law that uh, does not allow us during election period to start new infrastructure projects. Uh, that resulted in an underspending of close to one billion pesos a day uh, in the Philippines. Uh, and definitely uh, 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 the investment in our infrastructure suffered uh, because of that. Again, uh, I'm very happy though that this uh, Congress now, uh, headed by Alan Peter Cayetano has approved the uh, budget very early, and that uh, I'm pretty sure that the Senate will uh, concur and, uh, and give their approval as well within this year. Thank you, Vivian. Uh, Mrs. Mirror, Bernadette Nicolas. Hi, sir. Good morning. May we know what is the agenda in the bilateral meeting between President Duterte and Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe later? Are we expecting any form of assistance from Japanese government in terms of new trade and investments, loans, defense, or even aid for Mindanao quake hit communities, sir? Uh, I'm sure that uh, the Japanese Prime Minister uh, will uh, express his, uh, his condolences for the uh, 
people who were injured uh, or died during the last earthquake. And I'm sure they will, uh, some, we, we hope that some pro, uh, assistance will be provided. Uh, but essentially, our uh, relations with Japan, both in, in, uh, for our infrastructure projects, are on track. And uh, we make sure of that by uh, regular uh, scheduled meetings between the economic team in the Philippines and the Office of the Prime Minister of Japan. We meet with them uh, every between uh, two and th every three or four months. In fact, our next meeting is uh, scheduled for December, and uh, we meet once in the Philippines and then once in Japan. And this type of coordination has um, has improved the uh, has accelerated the uh, implementation of the the. Uh, uh, of approvals of the project and the implementation of the projects. So I don't, I'm not sure if there are any new initiatives, but um, just to, con most likely they will confirm uh, that we are on the right track and uh, it will confirm that, uh, uh, you know, the, the projects will uh, push through and that the financing from Japan is available. Thank you, Bernadette. Next question, Ian Cruz of GMA7. Hi, sir. Sir, can you inform us what happened during the ASEAN Plus 3 Summit? Uh, what was the center of discussion, sir? Again, uh, the center of discussion in the ASEAN Plus 3 was uh, the uh, commitment on both sides to enhance the cooperation between uh, ASEAN and uh, the group uh, represented by China, Korea, and Japan. Uh, as I said, uh, you know, the, the goals are, are very similar, uh, reduction of uh, poverty, improving, improving standards of living in ASEAN, and uh, moving ahead uh, with our uh, very large trading partners. I think those three countries uh, probably are, together, are the largest trading partners of uh, the ASEAN as a whole. So it's uh, very good that uh, we continue to cooperate and to affirm that uh, our uh, direction is correct, uh, although uh, sometimes you need some minor corrections uh, but basically, uh, it's been it's been a very uh, the, the the primary goal of uh, continued uh, and synchronized cooperation is uh, very important. Thank you, Ian. Uh, another question from Bloomberg. Thank you again. Our second question is, do you share central bank governance assessment that the central bank has done more than enough in cutting key rate and the bank's reserve requirement ratio for the year and that a pause is warranted? Thank you. What's the question? Do you share central bank governor's assessment that the central bank has done more than enough in cutting key rate and the bank's reserves requirement ratio for the year? <laughs> I believe that uh, uh, at this point in our, our uh, at this point in time, the central bank has uh, been very proactive in reacting to uh, the drop in our inflation rate. Uh, it has dropped very significantly. In fact, this is the I was looking through through history and. Uh, it is this administration that was be able to reduce the inflation rate the fastest uh, of any other administration in the past that experienced a spike in inflation. And a lot of that has to do with the coordinated action between uh, fiscal and monetary policy. We are working totally in sync with the central, with the central bank and uh, we consult with each other uh, very regularly. In fact, our offices are two minute or maybe five minute walk from each other. So we, we and I'm a member of the monetary board as well. So uh, we are totally in sync and uh, 
we are sure that uh, the central bank has taken the right action. Although, let me just say that there's another 100 basis points that uh, we're still over the low uh, interest rates that uh, we have had. So there's still a ways to go. But as of now, it's, uh, it's uh, sufficient and uh, will do the job. Thank you, Bloomberg. Question? Akiko of Asahi. Thank you so much. Uh, one more question about South China Sea. So the chairmanship of ASEAN will be handed to Vietnam next year. How, what do you expect the discussion of the South China Sea will progress next year? Because Vietnam has been quite outspoken these days for the wrongdoing of certain countries in the area. What do you think about it? You know, uh, from the discussions today, I mean, there's a commitment uh, that uh, they want to accelerate the, uh, the completion of the discussions on the code of conduct. And I'm sure that uh, under the leadership of uh, Vietnam, uh, this uh, goal of achieving uh, finalization or progress in the uh, code of conduct will be, will be, uh, will be made rapidly. No more? Okay. That concludes our press conference with Thank you very much. Secretary Dominguez. Thank you, Sec, and thank you to our friends. <laughs>